from Gideon to one and let the other go. So he says, point number three, made righteous. Number one, made alive. Number two, made new. Number three, made righteous. So we put on the new man and are made new. That the newness consists of characteristics that were intended to reflect God's image in us. Look at someone and tell them, Bye -bye. something new is already happening. So in Christ, not in Oprah Winfrey, not in Barack Obama, so in Christ, we are made righteous once again, just as we were created to be at the beginning. Can I preach the Bible tonight? And oh, Ephesians 4 and 24, I like preaching the Bible because I can't preach nothing else. I like preaching the Bible because I can't preach Time Magazine and Ebony Magazine because Ebony can't get us out of hell and time can't deliver us. But Ephesians 4 and 24 and put on the new man which he is of which in the likeness of God has been created in righteousness and holiness of truth. Look at somebody and tell them, neighbor, when you put on righteousness, when you put on newness, you got to put it on in truth. Oh, God. The thing that I don't like is hypocrites in the house of God. They act like they say, but they live another way after the benediction. You got to put on the newness, and you got to put it on every day. You got to get up in the morning and say, Lord, give me a new mind. Give me a new heart. Give me a new way of thinking. Give me a new way of treating people. We were created that way. We lost it. And now as new creatures in Christ, we are given his righteousness as our lives are set right and established on what is not just good, but the best. So we said in 2 Corinthians 5 and 21, he made him who knew no sin to become sin on our behalf that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, God. So we put on the new life in Christ and he makes his righteousness become ours so that as the father sees us he does not see what we used to be but he sees the perfected righteousness of Jesus Christ that's why he said some of these church folk that think they know me they just know me from the past but when God sees me he sees me righteous in Jesus isn't it strange how you come to church and somebody said I remember when I remember what you used to do I want to tell them you ain't saved and you should not delivered because if all you can remember is what I used to be shame on you oh thank you Jesus I just thought I'd say that so Philippians 3 and 9 says and may be found in him and not having a righteousness of our own derived from the law but that which is through Christ, faith in Christ the righteousness which comes from God on the basis of faith uh, look at somebody and say neighbor I've had some things to take place I've been made alive I've been made new I've had some things to take place because God is up to something. And number three, he made me righteous. I didn't deserve it, but he made me righteous.
conscious. Uh, it's hard for y'all to swallow it, but I'm going to tell you anyhow. It's hard for you to look at a prostitute outside and she comes in the church and you say, she's not saved. But what are you to say? She's not saved. Oh, thank you, Jesus. The package of salvation, the package of righteousness is already done. She has to just accept what is already done. Oh, thank you, Jesus. But we want to take people through changes. We want to make them save. We want to make them holy. Until they accept the process that has already been done. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Look at somebody and say, neighbor. Number four. Made holy. The image of God is at creation. It sets us apart as pure, holy, undefiled, unsustained by anything evil. The defiling impact of our lives, of our fall into sin calls us to become unholy and our lives filled with impurity. No longer set apart to live distinctively for the glory of God. But in Ephesians 4, 24, he said, and put on the new shell, which is in the likeness of God, which has been created in righteousness and holiness in truth. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Look at somebody and tell him he's making sense. It just don't sound like it. And again, the original design wants for us to reflect the holy nature of our creator as we were created in and for holiness. Now it is possible to come once again to a life of holiness through Christ Jesus and to be like him. So he said in Peter, 1 Peter 1, 15 and 16, he said this, but like the Holy One who called you, be ye holy. Be holy yourselves also in all your behavior. Because it is written, you shall be holy, for I am holy. Is that what it says? Am I preaching tonight? Oh, thank you, sir. Part number five, he said, made true. Oh, thank you, sir. I wasn't made a lie. I was made true. One of the most damaging aspects of the loss of God's image in our inability to embrace truth and live by it. Most of our lives, we live according to the careful, crafted lies we shape in our thinking uh -huh, and our behavior in ways that are often cruel and harsh. Oh, thank you, Jesus. So once we recover from the loss and the image of God begins to be restored in us, two very important changes takes place. Number one, in what we know, he says in John 8, 32, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Oh, he says, our eyes begin to awaken to the truth of life as God designed it, complete with the vision of how wondrously he has created all things to reflect his glory and to give attention to every detail from the largest to the smallest elements of creation, from the biggest issues among the nations to the smallest worries in our hearts. We, we, when we discover the truth about God, life begins to make sense in a way that it didn't before. Number two, it is in how we think, not just in how we know the truth, but also in how we think. Not only does we get to know the generated level, to generate a new level of enthusiasm and insight 